we're going to be talking a little bit on uh, engagement today and hearing from a very lively panel on their experiences at Penn State. So by way, we're going to start with brief introductions, and I've asked the panelists to tell us a little bit about themselves and also their interest in, in taking up my invitation for to be a part of the panel today. So I'm also curious as to what interested them about talking about engagement with you today. So I'll start very quickly. I'm Karen Morassi. I'm the Director of Student Engagement here in the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences. And I like to say that I'm here to help students identify and access ways they can take their academics beyond the classroom. So what can they do in a co-curricular sense to bring their academics to life or then just to grow into the person they want to become as they see themselves in the future and as they're leaving and why do they want to see themselves as they leave Penn State. And so I feel like that is my role here in the college. And I work with students, student groups, and also with faculty to help them in terms of creating experiences as well as a part of their classes or how they might want to engage students in that way. So that's me, a little bit about me. Uh, so I'm gonna start with Haley. How about you go next? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Haley Sankey. I am a teacher and advisor in the uh, college in the Dutton Institute for World Campus Students. And um, I'm excited to be a part of the panel because I believe very strongly in the benefits of student engagement for our students. Um, and I personally, as an instructor, have had some of my most valuable interactions with students during engagement experiences, so. Glad to be here. Thanks, Haley. How about you, Kevin? Why don't you go next? Sure. Hi, I'm Kevin Shea, uh, 2007 meteorology graduate. Um, I, I'm here today just because I'm I'm so involved in Penn State. I, I really like giving back as much as I can. I'm a member of the grad, uh, graduates of Earth and Mineral Sciences, the GEMS Board. I'm also president of the New York City chapter of the Alumni Association. Uh, so do do a lot with alumni and students. And just uh, now that I have a home here in State College, just trying to find ways to, to engage and help the university in any way I can. Thanks for being with us today, Kevin. Anthony, how about you go next? Hello, everyone. My name is Anthony. I am a senior in material science and engineering. And some of the extracurriculars I'm involved with are I'm the senior representative of Materials Advantage. I'm the vice president of Minorities in Earth and Mineral Science, and I am an Earth and Mineral Science ambassador. And my aspiration for being here today was to see if I could help people with any of my experiences and to give advice, specifically undergrads. I'm hoping with any hearing my experiences, I can, you can learn from my mistakes and make better and smart choices uh, for your future here at Penn State. So I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Anthony. Delian, how about you? Hi, everyone. Are you able to hear me? Hi everyone, I'm Delian Colon Burgos. I am a junior at studying meteorology and atmospheric science. And here I am currently involved as the secretary of SUBAMS, which is the Penn State branch of the meteorology, the American Meteorological Society. I'm also a EMS ambassador and member of the Campus Weather Service. And I also serve as the social chair for the Puerto Rican Student Association, and that's not part of EMS, but it's part of my engagement here in Penn State. And I'm also involved in research. So yeah, when I was invited to the panel, I was very honored because I have benefited a lot from um, engagement in the college and in the university overall. And I, yeah, am, I'm aware of the benefits and I think it's super important to share that with incoming students and um, freshmen and the staff members as well. Great, thank you. Angie, are you ready? Barely, sorry if I seem like a a little hot and sweaty. I like hooked it from like the library to today because my Wi-Fi wasn't good. Um, but hi, my name is Angie. I'm a senior here. I do a lot of different stuff. So I'm double majoring in earth science and policy and geography. I have about five or six different minor certificates throughout kind of everywhere. I'm a student trier, Millennium Scholars Program, Presidential Leadership Academy. I've also worked extensively with World in Conversation, a couple of DEI committees, and um, with LifeLink, helping students with learning disabilities. Um, so I just want to share my breadth of experience. I feel like I've a 
a good amount of perspective on a lot of things that happen on campus. And I think it's part of my responsibility of building a community to be able to share my knowledge um, and to create something better and brighter for the future. Well, thank you all for being here today and joining the panel and being, again, a part of our EMS community. And I agree with you, Andy, there that it is a very special place and we, it, we all benefit from the stories that we share. So I'm gonna give you each a chance to tell a story. So some, I think sometimes we, uh, we find a lot of value in our storytelling and our sharing of our experiences. And so I'm gonna ask each of you to please share a story about your favorite engagement experience. Um, what, so why is it your favorite? Um, how did you learn about the experience? Who was it that made you want to participate or what was it that made you want to participate and who helped you along the way? And so, you know, give us a moment, think about it, like if you had to pick a favorite and sometimes that's hard um, and Haley gets the advantage of she can pick to speak from her own experience as an undergraduate student or as a student, or she can also speak to her role as faculty. So I'll let you each kind of jump in when you're ready, but tell us your favorite story. Tell us, you know, the thing that, you know, for whatever, and tell us why it's your favorite. So it doesn't have to have a particular, you can tell us the reason why. I'll, I'll jump in first because uh, uh, I was hit the unmute button first. But uh, yeah, I, I think for me and, and uh, Deliana mentioned it as well for, you know, from my, from my experience, you know, I, I really remember my time at Campus Weather Service as the most. And, and the reason I, I say that is I, I wasn't someone who was super eager to jump into a lot of things when I was on campus. And I really found that the more years that went by after I left the university, the more I appreciated the experience. And I can get, I can share kind of two, two quick stories about that. One is, you know, I was really, really interested in uh, getting involved in the more business side of things with meteorology. And there really wasn't an option back when I was in school. And I felt like um, the campus weather service kind of allowed me to, to start something on my own. I, I don't even know if it's still there. I started this like business committee and I had only had a couple of people, but it was just so fun to just kind of have the flexibility to start something on my own, get some people from the ground up and had a, had a really good time. Um, and and I, I really learned about, you know, it was able to share in some of my job interviews about kind of starting something from scratch and being able to explore something brand new. I, I think it resonated with some people that I interviewed with. Um, and then the second thing I'd say is I remember kind of years later, you know, people coming up to me and saying that, I was so enthusiastic as as a as a shift leader um, when I was back in school, and just you know, hearing how many people you know, was, I'm not saying it's an earth shattering number of people, but they're just hearing people come back to me later and say, you know, the reason that they enjoyed their engagement so much in my campus weather shift was the level of enthusiasm that I brought, how I tried to make it as fun as possible, and just hearing that feedback really helped give me some confidence that you know, some of the things that I do in my work life now and, and the enthusiasm and the ability to make things as fun as possible, that it didn't always had an, didn't only have an impact, you know, kind of post-college, but also during my college career. So um, that th those two things I'd say are two quick stories about, about my engagement at school. Who else wants to jump in with a favorite? I really enjoy research. It took a while to, to get into the lab and to do what I'm doing now. I I've did so, I just tried stuff in liberal arts, stuff in sociology, but I ended up coming back and doing geochemistry volcanology. And I just, it's so fulfilling. I don't know. It's like, it seems like it's not necessarily the most social aspect, but it's definitely um, the most fulfilling part of engagement because I'm, I'm quite literally creating knowledge for other people to consume and to apply to other projects and stuff and just the thought that like we as people and as an undergraduate I can create knowledge for others to use it's just such a cool thing and to have that spread throughout the network and I also love doing outreach stuff um, with students interested in starting STEM careers um, this isn't necessarily with Penn State in general, but I work with my community back home to try to get more minorities in STEM. And I just I just love to, to show people that you can really break those social barriers. And if you want to become a scientist, then become a scientist. It's about redistributing generational power. And I think that's something really important. Thank you, Angie. 
Yes, I'll go ahead you. and go, um, unless someone else is. So um, from a student perspective, I have so many um, engagement memories, but the most recent was during the master's program, we were required to go to Penn State Barron. I did my master's online through World Campus, but we were required to go to Penn State Barron for um, a conference. And while we were there, we were with students who were in the uh, project management program full-time on that campus. And it was so engaging um, as far and like reinvigorating because I was kind of getting at that point where it was just like, oh, I got to keep going and get this over with. Like it was just over the hump of halfway. But to be around people who were able to be fully immersed in the program full time um, and just, you know, just kind of relit the passion um, for the subject for me and um, gave me the push I needed to finish the degree. Um, as a faculty member, my most recent and really great memory is, you know, last year we were going, everybody was adjusting to the new normal of working from home and students were being coached through the Student Engagement Network grant program. And I was one of the coaches and, you know, everything just seemed so bleak and we were all very spread out and just trying to triage the, the projects that the students had and things and trying to salvage what we could. And um, I don't even remember what exactly we were talking about. One of the students made a comment to me that really made me like just really open my eyes to this generation and how much they diversity inclusion is just part of what they do. It's not something that they yes they think about it and yes it's but it's it's almost second nature to them. Where I feel like um, the generations that came before um, it was definitely a more of a concerted effort and it was just. It was so uh, heartwarming and hopeful. And I just really got such a charge out of hearing them talk in a way that made it so quote unquote normal. And um, and so I just really, uh, it was it was a shot in the arm that I needed to get through <laughs> COVID. And I think, you know, just having that interaction with one another, even though we were all online um, was really good across the board, so. Great, thank you. Anthony or Delian, you wanna jump in? Yeah, I can uh, jump in. All right, said, you're good. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, yeah, one of my favorite engagement experiences have been participating in REUs. That's NSF funded um, research experiences for undergraduates. Um, that's usually programs that occur during the summer. So I've spent my last two summers um, working on different research projects. And I think it's just very fulfilling to know that you're, what you're learning in the classroom is actually applicable to the real world. And that's where you see it like while doing your research. Um, so if you're doing or just interested in, in the research aspect, um, I will totally recommend it because I've gained so much of it. I, just like the REU I did from my freshman year to sophomore year has like gotten me like the collaboration I, I and the relationship I built with my PI like was so strong that I have already like participating in three papers with her. And yeah, it, that's something that as an undergraduate, it's, it's very fulfilling for me to to know that I'm, I'm doing a difference in science and um, yeah, expanding my network most of all because it's not jo just like doing research I'm doing research here at Penn State and build, building relationships with my, my professors here but also outside of Penn State and I think that's a big thing that Penn State also pushes you to get out there and go do experiences in agencies and um and laboratory facilities that on the end of the day could be your future work so yeah that's big part of, of what I have done. Great. And I'll hop in from there. My experience also pertains to research. It's also what Haley just mentioned about the student engagement network. So that I was involved with that last this past summer. And through that, I did research studying glass. And I kind of got there in the sense where that's when COVID hit and I, I couldn't find any opportunities for myself that summer. And that presented the perfect one. 
And with the help of the Matsi faculty staff and just graduate students, I was able to kind of get through that application process and have a really fulfilling summer uh, just doing research. I felt uh, academically, I really grew learning just about glass, something I hadn't done before. And also it was really the first time I gained uh, like a, a sense of really true responsibility where I was heading the project myself, doing all the work. And that kind of boosts, that boosts your confidence. So I, I really, I really grew from the experience overall for, throughout that summer. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. Well, thank you, everybody. Now that I've, I've got you warmed up uh, for our participants, there's going to be a chance for a little Q&A at the end. And so if there is a panelist, you might want to ask a question too. So keep that in mind. Um, but we're going to go through a couple of questions here, just kind of exploring some of these thoughts and some of these ideas here. But there will be some time at the end. So hang on to those questions. And we'll have those a, a little bit at the end. So for my panelists, again, um, do you feel that there's something that you or your students gain from these types of experiences, whether it be research or student organizations or some of these other ways that we uh, work on engagement here at Penn State. Do you think that there's something that students get from these experiences that you otherwise can't can't get them at Penn State? So they're not necessarily through, um, the, you know, through other other ways. And then and what are those, you know, what are those gains like for you? I think Anthony just kind of maybe gave us a perfect segue talking about confidence. And so can, talk to me if there is, are, is there something that you get from these experiences that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get. I'll go first again, maybe. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like, you know, from my position, I, I do a lot of, I'll, I'll give a little bit of my personal experience and then maybe a little bit as a, in my role, I do a lot of hiring and recruiting uh, of, of college level students. So. And I feel like in these engagement experiences, it's just another example of being able to apply the skill sets that you're, you're learning in school. And, and what I always say, in particular about meteorology, is that no matter what type of job you take when you graduate from our major, really the thing that I think that we do a really, really great job at is that we have to take these very, very complex ideas and be able to communicate them to an audience that's not that's very technically sound. And that is a skill set that is incredibly valuable for a number of types of careers. Um, and with these other types of experiences, depending on what you're working on, these are just more opportunities for you to test that skill set and use it, right? Whether you're working in a team, you know, for my the example I gave, I was working in campus weather service, so it's a little bit more applicable to my to, to my major, but just it's just more experience of being able to explain something in a way to make people understand it easier. So um, I think any type of engagement where you get that practice and you get that experience where you can go out and say, all right, I've got this complex thing. I need to explain it. I need to work with a team. I need to work with a group. I need to just be able to talk with someone who's different and not in the same maybe class that I'm in uh, at school. Whatever it is, it's just more experience. And I feel like, you know, students who interviewed with me who have these more experiences, who have you know, have had time to be able to work with other types of people while on campus. It's just, it's incredibly invaluable in my opinion. So I think it's just the, the more, the more cracks out that you get, the better. And, and I've seen, you know, those students who are really involved and engaged uh, in these types of experiences end up, I think, doing well, especially early days if you bring them in for an internship or something where they're still, still in school. I think that when um, a lot of people hear the word network, especially as an undergraduate um, undergraduate students, and I can speak from experience, I was like, what is a network? Like, what does that even like really mean to like have a network? Like, do I even really need this if I'm just going to school to like get a career? And I'm like, as I've matured throughout my college career, I'm like, yes, like you do need a network because even if you're interested in this one small part of research or academia, you need to know how that's applicable and useful to other people. And you might need like someone to write a letter of recommendation or a grant or connect you to a, a government organization or some kind of politician. And I really like that at Penn State networking even though it's not always said specifically, but networking is like at the top of like everyone's like priority list. And that is something I love. Like it doesn't even matter if you're going out and running for coffee with a professor or you have a club meeting. It's crazy to just see how connected Penn State is with the world outside of Penn State and how in some places it's Penn State's really in tune to that. And so I really enjoy being active in that, in that process of feedback. 
And so that's something super valuable I get from Penn State. Anyone else want to jump in on this one? Yeah, I can resonate a bit on what Kevin said. Like coming from meteorology, I think our major is really math and physics based and all the opportunities I've had within the department, I think have made a whole skill set of knowing how to communicate well, also like having a network and building on community itself. So it's just, I think there's something that test and homework can develop that engagement experiences do. And that's like the social skills and what at the end of the day is gonna distinguish you from other people in the workforce. So yeah, and overall, like um, I think engagement experiences give you the opportunity to test what you like and what you don't like, most importantly. Um, and help you define your career path at the end of the day, so. Awesome. All right, so I have another question. Um, so I don't, I know, I recognize a lot of the names of the faces with, of the faces with us here today in the, in Zoom. Um, but so, but these are a lot of people who work closely with students at Penn State. So I recognize a lot of our participants today and this session is also being recorded. So this next question is, uh, think of it as, you know, helping people, you know, be able to uh, talk to other students, but also potentially for a student who may watch a snippet of a recording someday. What advice would you give an entering first year student? who's just starting out at Penn State. And this is also super valuable for me as someone who talks to first year students all the time about you should be engaged and, why, and being engaged and engagement at Penn State. So I'd like to hear your voices. So help us know um, from the perspective of those of us who, might, who are interfacing with lots of students, you know, give us some authentic answers, give us some of those genuine things that we can share with others about, you know, like, so what would you tell somebody? What would you tell a first year student who's just starting out at Penn State? You know, like give it, give us, share that with us, even though maybe you're not talking to one directly right now, but I can tell you, you're gonna indirectly talk to lots of them. Um, I would say that like entering at Penn State, like in high school, there's very like engaged in a lot of clubs and things. Um, so I come from, you know, that background of being really like, super busy with academics and also engagement. Um, activities, but I think the first semester is really important to focus on academics and like establishing a very good GPA. Um, but also at the same time, I would say like get engaged at least in three activities. Like, I don't, I don't know who told me this, but it worked. <laughs> it was like, choose a club that you like to like, that could be like whatever you like, like a fun thing to do, something that's fun to you. And then something that might be like a cultural club or or if you're a minority, like focus on minorities or that could be like a service club or something like that. And then one that it's like related to your major or more professional and um, that can help you, you know, in that professional aspect. So that's what, what I would say. <laughs> I'll approach it from, again, since we've got a nice group here, I'll just approach it quickly from the recruiting end of things again, uh, which I find hopefully a useful perspective, which would be that um, every year it just gets incredibly, incredibly more and more competitive <laughs> when people are out there looking for jobs. And I feel like, you know, the more experiences and the, the more things that you can bring to the table, um, the better, you know, the, the, the people that I always um, look at when I'm in interviews is those students who, hey, you know, in my free time, I went and did this and I learned this new skill, or I really wanted to do this and I went out and did that. And anything you can do to, you know, in the course of your college career um, to, to kind of make yourself stand out and, and show a willingness to learn and engage, I think is, uh, is, is really important and good. I'd say uh, my comment with this is trying to answer the question. I think what I hear often is the, like the phrase, I don't know what I really want to want to do with my life yet. And that is the probably the toughest question to ask. And it's a hard question to answer. And really only you can answer it. 
And so my kind of solution to that question is to try to just explore opportunities as early as possible. And I think, I think that's the key. Freshman year, I'll just speak personally, in terms of, well, just on regards with research, I didn't have, I wasn't confident enough to go up to any professor to say like, to join their group, because I didn't feel that I had the necessary skills or knowledge built yet to really actually be of any use. But the, the key is you do. <laughs> but, and if you, even if you don't, the professors want to help you anyway, faculty and staff want to help you grow and learn. And so kind of getting over that barrier and trying to find what you do want to do is, is the whole goal. And so if you don't like something, try something else and eventually you will find what you like. So, yeah. In my opinion, you will not enter and leave college as the same person. And if you did, you're doing it wrong. Um, and so I think that it's important that you embrace the change that's going to come, like whether you're an adult learner or like not an adult learner. And so just try everything because the you right now might like different things from you in the future. And so just explore and don't be afraid to mess up. You might join a club that you hate or start or join an organization that you don't like or find that your passions lie in some place that you never thought they did and just embrace that change. And I think that's the best advice. Just try and explore and experience things as a freshman. Don't worry about messing up or again, yes, get your GPA together. That will save you in the next few years, um, especially junior year. Um, but once you have your GPA and that foundation built, everything else is like a flourish, a little spice to life. Like you want to have like your oatmeal and then add your nuts and then your cinnamon and then your nutmeg after you have that steady foundation. But have some fun oatmeal. Yeah. Haley, is there anything else you want to add into that question about your best advice? I don't know how I can beat the oatmeal comment. Um, <laughs> no, I, I would just say um, to get involved. Like, that's what I would tell them. Like, find anything. Just get involved because, you know, it's been proven that engaged students um, stay in school and graduate at higher rates than those that aren't. And um if you can find like-minded people or people with the same interests, you know, that you can blow off steam with, um, or that, you know, um, that you can use as a support network when, you know, your family's far away or your best friends from high school are available. Um, like it's, it's just so important to, to find that family here and you're not going to do that if you don't make an effort. And so you gotta, you gotta get involved. All right, friends on the panel, I'm going to go off script a little bit, but it's Angie gave me such a great idea, so I cannot absolutely ask this question. What is, Angie, you talk about surprises. What has been a surprise? So what, what, does, the, what does the Angie now um, like that maybe first year Angie would not have even ever thought about? So for those of you who can give me a little bit of a now and then, you know, um, what have been the surprises along the way? I think in college, I learned how to be a lot more empathetic, not only to myself as being an indigenous Latinx person in STEM. Sometimes it's really hard to be the only person and it's also queer, it's so many intersectional identities, but it's sometimes it's hard to like be you and in, in, in EMS and in Penn State and the world in general. And so I think my work in world and conversation and learning empathy training really helps me to not only be kind to myself, but to others. And I think just kindness really is a thing that I didn't think I was capable of coming into college, but now I feel like I'm leaving with such a full heart and ready to just really ready to get going and change the world. And, and I say that, with coming in with the mindset of college, like being a very jaded, um, like introverted, like stick to the status quo kind of person. And I have just changed so much and I think it's for the better. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else wanna share a surprise? Uh, I'll share one surprise. I think uh, eventually 
it's it's more related to academics. It's just coming from high school. You, I'm sure everyone at Penn State did very well academically, and there's always that first shock of maybe getting the exam back, and it's not the grade you were expecting. And I think that was my biggest shock. It just kind of getting past that hump of everything's still going to be okay. You know, there you can work hard, get it back, and everything's fine. But yeah. Yeah, I really like how you've brought several reflections on confidence, how all, you know, how these experiences help help you actually build into a very confident scholar. And so that's, that's awesome. That's such a great theme that you're bringing. Anybody else want to share a surprise? As a faculty member that works with adult students, I think um, when our program initially started and there was a study abroad or an internship component to it, there was a lot of pushback adult students aren't going to want to do this. They're not going to have the time. They're not going to have the money, whatever. Um, and I would myself as well as many others have been so pleasantly surprised with how much our students want to get engaged. First of all, they want to feel a part of Penn State. The majority of the reason that they come here is because of the reputation, because of the family um, heritage, like other brother, sister, aunt, uncle, dad, whatever came to Penn State and they want that Penn State degree too. And so they, they don't just want the degree, they want the experience. And even though they can't be here full time, they want the experience. And so we have, you know, so many world campus um, clubs, which are active. We have the world campus um, student council now that's great. And, um, the students in our program jump on the opportunity to do an internship to study abroad is like a chance for them to do something they've always wanted to do but never had the excuse to do it and so it's just kind of like that um, push that they need to make it happen and so um it's been just such a great um surprise to see how much they really embrace the idea and just like go at it full force and um some of them want to do both experiences some people want to do an internship abroad <laughs> you know they come up with all kinds of neat ideas but um yeah it's just been really really exciting to to see them um take it on with everything else they've got going on in their lives All right, I think Haley actually kind of gave me a bit of a segue there. So I'm gonna take it right now and go hop on to the next question is, uh, what are some of the barriers to undergraduate engagement? What are some of the barriers either you've experienced or in this case, like I think Haley just kind of gave us a thread that people think that students don't know, they don't wanna do it. You know, like that's a barrier, right? And so what are some of the barriers do you think that are out there for engagement and engagement experiences. And, and if you if you happen to have a solution, please feel free to share your solution. Here's a hot take. Um, Penn State has a lot of diversity, but it's still struggling with inclusion. And so I think in EMS, in my experience, going from freshman to senior, um, I find that the international um, BIPOC and then like white student population seem to sometimes exist as um, like separate entities. And so as like a first year or freshman student, sometimes it's like difficult to like navigate all these unspoken like social things that are going on because people are bringing in their notions and um, their ways of behavior, not necessarily speaking in the discriminatory sense, but like sometimes they may not know how to interact with um, diversity or people from other backgrounds. And so it's like, oh, I'm going to go with like what I'm comfortable with. And so I think the biggest barrier is um, getting these students to see each other as like fellow students and classmates and like, you're a person, I'm a person, we're awkward in this world, let's kind of be friends. And to get past those, those first like nervousness kind of things that happen. I would say um, I also struggle with inclusion. You know, when we did the um, cause program, we were really, myself and Dan Casper, the other faculty member, we really wanted to get as many people from all the different campuses and, um, you know, we just wanted to include as many different types of people as we could, but we just, our application pool was not diverse. And we are like, we struggle with how to, 
make sure that the opportunities that do exist get to the get to everyone. Um, and so that is something that I think we as faculty, maybe at the college level, struggle with a little bit is how to put the messages in the right places so that everybody is aware of the opportunities that do exist. And I'd say to build off that in general, I think a barrier is just the information sense of it. If you don't know of an opportunity existing here, you won't apply to it. So as a freshman, I remember diligently checking my emails and even still missing things that I was shocked that I missed about. Like, uh, I think there's a freshman internship NASA program that I would have loved to do, but I only found out about it my junior year. So things like that. I would, I think my solution to that would just be maybe even organizing it in your, in your inbox and maybe just have a little folder with just saying opportunities. But I'd say keeping a good tab of hearing things from the peers as well as what you're getting in your email and seeing if anything interests you and then following up on it. Something to add for a solution that I just thought of, and this is like half a joke and like half not a joke, it's like Penn State, like EMS should have like a town crier, like someone with a bell that like walks the halls and says like, this event's happening in like these few hours or just, I don't know, just like speak it. Like sometimes like it's, you get inundated with emails and you're like, I swear if I have to look at one more email, I'm gonna scream. So just um, experimenting with different types of media maybe like poster, maybe zines, maybe like having like a physical newsletter. I just know it's not eco-friendly, but I'm more likely to look at a brochure than my email. Just stuff like that. Like it's, it's easier to ignore an email than like a person like in your face. You could pay somebody to like spin an arrow. <laughs> I, I have this deep fear you're adding things to my job description right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a bell arriving in my office at some point. Kevin or Delion, do you want to join in? Any idea on bear, any thoughts on barriers? Yeah, I was going to say a good, like a good idea to just, it's part of what we're doing, but just like that, freshmen and incoming students know and realize all the benefits from engagement and that state like know all the benefits though um obviously want to be more aware of the opportunities out there and yeah and the information is another aspect it could be a barrier um but I think as well like balancing academics and extracurriculars could be a bit hard as well and I think what I've found um good for that it's just like organization um so like academics go first but also it's extracurricular so it have made the experience at Penn State super fun and um you know very memorable so yeah I just think like experiences like totems it's not totems now it's like teams <laughs> right so experiences like teams just like and experiences like that enforcing um really enforcing the the importance of engagement and, and doing a lots of things um, and exploring as much as you can in early on in your career. I'm a little further removed, so I, I was, I'll trust the judgment of uh, everyone about the barriers. What, what I'll say is just two quick comments. One is, you know, being someone on the GEMS board, um, there's such an interest in wanting to engage in, with students and, and whatnot. And it's just, you know, it, it, I don't have a perfect solution, but there, you know, I remember when I was in school, um, um, it, you know, the idea of even reaching out to an alumni or alumni organization wasn't even something on my radar. And um, so I'd say, you know, it, potential solutions is that, you know, beyond the resources that are, that already exist, there, there is such a great alumni base and EMS does such a good job of making this big place seem like a, a smaller area that you can engage with. So I, I don't have any barriers to, to overcome, but I'll, I'll just give those comments because I, I think they still ring true. Also, I recognize that I'm taking up a lot of space. I'm just full of ideas. So sorry if you're tired of hearing me talk. Um, but there's something to be said about metaphorically and like literally like creating spaces for things. Um, and I think like right now we're like the metaphorical, but I think it's important to like move into like the physical. So I think that like if we get professors or 
just like alumni or even grad students just hang out on the Ryan Family Student Center because that really is the heartbeat of EMS right now. Um, just like sit around, just like take 15, 20 minutes and just talk with students. And I think that process of humanizing would really help with engagement, being like, oh, I like this professor. You're cool. I want to work with you. And then getting people to just talk more and just interact will help them to realize by osmosis, like a professor could say, oh, I'm teaching this special class or like, are you interested in this program? Or I might not be doing this, but I know another professor or another faculty member who's doing this, this, and this. And then that, that process of active networking would be helpful. You are absolutely most welcome to share, Angie. So don't feel bad at all. So we're so I am so glad you're here today. So I'm gonna ask one more question before we open up the Q&A from our audience, because I have a feeling they have questions for you too, besides just me. Um, you've, you've talked about lots of amazing thing you, things you've done uh, or maybe you want to do yet, but if you could start again from the beginning at wherever point in time you are right now, if you could go back to the beginning and do something differently, what would it be? I don't mind starting. I'd say uh, during my time here, I was been with uh, quite a few research groups. I very much struggled with the problem I mentioned earlier of what I wanted to do. And I'm for happy to say now that I know I want to do something with batteries. So perfect. But it took four different research groups to kind of get me there to figure that out. So if I were to go back, I would say in my recommendation to myself would just make sure to be ambitious, but also very diligent and thorough with every action and class that you intend on taking. So I would think of it more of making sure I'm really, why I really want to do this thing or take this class specifically, rather than thinking of it more as a, uh, maybe just a checkbox for some other class or just a prereq. That would be, that'd be my advice to myself if I were going back. I've had a long time <laughs> to think about this question. This is a great question. Um, obviously, work out more is number one because that would have been that would have been great for just like long term health. Um, I, honestly, I, in all truthfulness um, on this question, I really think if someone just took me and say, just take a breath and relax. Um, I, I think that you know college is supposed to be fun. You have opportunity to do academics, but and, and get involved and engage in, in a lot of things and. I think personally, from my perspective, I thought a lot about like, oh, should I be doing this or that or this and that? And I think I overthought it. I think really just enjoy and let things happen. As you said, there's so many great things to engage with in college that, you know, try not to overthink it. If something sounds interesting, like I remember I got invited to some club meeting and I wasn't that involved in it. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to go. And I ended up, the person who did go ended up making a ton of friends. Like there's just like lost opportunities. If, if I just relax and just said, you know what, I'm going to try new things. I'm just going to see what happens and, and not really worry about, you know, the, the far out future uh, and just try, try as many new things as possible. So I, I think that would be the advice I'd give myself. Um, personally, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I messed up when I needed to mess up and I failed really bad and really hard when I needed to. And those are lessons I wouldn't want to change because I, I needed a pardon. I shouldn't say this. I needed a swift kick in the ass sometimes like, throughout my career. It was good. It's good character building. Um, but I would tell myself to get off my phone and go to bed when it's time to go to bed because I'm sleep deprived. And that's the thing I would change. Anybody else have anything they would change? Um, I don't, I feel like I won't change anything in terms of engagement. I would like to do a study abroad experience or like just like international experience. I still have two years, so let's see if that works out with COVID. Um, but overall, I think just like thinking back, I wish I would have been so hard on myself. Like I just put so much pressure that first year on like academically to do well and like I suffered when I like didn't do well on, on an exam but like after I realized like it doesn't matter at all like it's just an exam and it doesn't define you 
and and it, at the end of the day like one exam is not gonna mess up the whole thing so yeah just like trying academics are important but yeah also have fun and and don't be so hard on yourself Well, at this point, if our part audience participants have any questions, you are welcome to share them in the chat or you feel free to pop on screen here with us and unmute and ask a question of my panel here. I think you were pretty, it's pretty clear that we're, they're very open and willing to share <laughs> their experiences and anything, you know, perspectives on engagement with students or anything else that might be on your mind after our panel, after our little uh, conversation today. That includes you panelists. Do you have any questions? I don't have a question, but I do want to say that um, I spent a semester abroad the fall of my senior year, and it was, I don't remember how it came about. It was kind of a fluke, but I ended up in India for a semester, and it was obviously amazing and like one of the best things I've ever done. Um, and it was valuable on so many levels. And I thought for a while it might push back my graduation. And I, at the time I was just like so upset about maybe graduating a semester late. Um, and I didn't go with my friends. Like I didn't go at the same time as everyone else went. Um, you know, I know that's a big thing at Penn State, like everybody goes their junior year, blah, blah, blah. Um, do it. If you have the chance, just do it. It's totally worth it. I hope that COVID lets you have that experience because um, it's worth pushing back your graduation a semester if you have to, um, because you're not that you may get a chance to do something like that later in life, but it'll be different. And so if you get the opportunity, I, I say um, you know, throw in the towel and go. <laughs> I'll agree with you there, Haley. I think when I, uh, thank you all, by the way, you uh, totally affirm so much of uh, what I'm especially trying to do with first years is Anthony, you gave me such a wonderful, you know, like piece of why, why am I doing things? Not, there's aren't, these aren't just boxes to be checked. These are things that um, I, you know, being thoughtful about the journey and about the choices. So I appreciate your comments there about the why and, um, you know, about sometimes you, and it's all about learning and then taking the information and moving forward and in those new ways. And even if sometimes the lessons are hard, Angie, I totally appreciate that. And so, um, so I appreciate all of your perspectives on that. And I think when I talk to first years, I'm going to echo what Haley just said, as I often say, your backyard is now an amazing place people, opportunities, art, music. I, I regret, what do I regret? I regret the music I didn't go hear. There's so many amazing performers. I'm sure I should have gone, I could have gone for free or cheap. And I didn't go listen to the music because I was too busy doing homework. I had to get over all the problems right. You know, and I, and I didn't understand how to balance that. And I didn't understand the value, um, especially coming up from a first generation perspective. And so, um, I think that some of those are some of the, you know, really some of those deep conversations to have with students is the idea of the why and how special this time is. It is different. It will be different afterward. It won't, it, this isn't the best, but it'll be different. You know, this is such a, you know, transformative and Angie, going back to your original comment that um, you will transform. And I would, like you said that you, you're not doing it right. I would say we have failed if you haven't transformed that that is our job here as educators, as folks who support students, as all of us who are working as a part of your experience, we are here to provide those opportunities for transformation. So it's not just on you, it's on us as well as a part of the community. And so um, if there aren't any other questions or anything that I'm gonna thank my panelists for being here. You guys were amazing. And I did so much as Annie Taylor said in the comments there, enjoy hearing your stories. And I so much appreciate your openness and your candor and your willingness to talk. And thank you all, and I hope all of you have a fantastic afternoon. Thanks, everyone. I'll applaud. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Have a great thank day. You.